Hello, my soccer universe. Time to look into what happened in the last week and, and finish up a few leagues. I mean, more or less, the first league season is over, except in Scandinavia, where they play year round. But uh, all the main leagues are done and dusted by now. Uh, we have a few playoffs. There is, uh, at this very, very moment, I haven't seen anything Aston Villa and Derby County are playing. I uh, might do a short video tomorrow while on the way to work on that if I get anything. Same thing, uh, Germany has the second uh, relegation playoff match. So uh, that is also not featured in this video now. I might either do it as a tag on here or do a separate video. Uh, also, before I go through this, I expect it to be a slightly longer video, but uh, let's see. Um, I wanted to quickly mention we have on Wednesday, of course, the Europa League final. So I might have on uh, Wednesday a little preview for that in the style that I did for the World Cup semi-final final. I uh, will do then one or two special videos for the Champions League before I do a Champions League final uh, preview in the same style as for the Europa League final. Um, and you will get, of course, my predictions uh, for that one remains to be seen. I'm still a little bit undecided. I'm leaning a certain way in both matches, uh, but let's see where it will go. What am I wearing? I'm wearing my last centenary third jersey, second jersey, whatever it was. I think it was not the away, it was probably the away jersey. It was in black and the third jersey was the reversal uh, in gold and black, which I couldn't get. I have a black one. Um, because honestly, when I now that we're at the end of the season, and I probably should do a whole season review video for at least the top five leagues each separately. The problem is there's already three national team tournaments coming up rather fast, so a little bit short of time and not much time to do this video. So let's see. But yeah, Lusk clearly is my highlight of the year. They had the best season ever. Uh, yes, it is dampened by a little bit my overall feeling by what happened in Italy, especially yesterday. yesterday I'm still a little bit reeling from it, more on it later. Uh, also, um, that Liverpool didn't make it to the championship, they made it to the Champions League final. So yeah, there were a few down downers, but um, Lusk was the big, 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 big plus. Also, I was twice at the stadium this year, which hasn't happened in a long time. Okay. Let's get right to it. We'll start our little uh, review in Spain. Not much to review. I'm not going to go in the Segunda División now because they still have uh, two rounds to play, I think. We had a cup final. Barcelona losing to Valencia 2-1. Um, everything you want to hear is in the video up there that I summarized. But basically, Gamero and Rodrigo gave Valencia 2-0 lead. Uh, Barcelona hit the post uh, through Messi. They got the the one two, but then not really much coming. Valencia actually in the end quite deservedly moves on. So in England, we know now the third uh, team being promoted into the Premier League, which is Aston Villa beating Derby County in the play of 2-1. Um, was a match that was a little bit nervous at the beginning. Aston Villa then actually took control of the game. Anwar El Ghazi gets the 1-0 uh, just before halftime. And then in the uh, second half, John McGinn, uh, after a horrible goalkeeping mi mistake, uh, makes it 2-0 and it seemed everything clear for Villa. Derby County only comes very, very late in into the game, uh, has a few chances only when Martin Weckhorn uh, makes it 2-1. Um, Villa suddenly gets shaky, which is so often the case. But in the end, they hold on and are now in the Premier League. I personally am happy that they made it back. Let's go Italy. Um, yeah, everything you need to know about what the final day showdown that happened yesterday again. Up here you have everything you will need to know. I gave you a, almost a minute by minute breakdown uh, in yesterday's uh, video. Um, was it was heartbreaking in the end. So the results of the last match day, Frosinone Kievo 0-0, Bologna beats Napoli 3-2. If there wasn't anything riding 
on it, it's not so special. I mean, if there was something right or wrong at the end, it would have been a big result. But Bologna is one of the positive teams in the second half. Torino Lazio, 3-1. Uh, maybe, just maybe, uh, this could mean that Torino also gets now a European spot, which anyway from before, it depends on whether Milan goes in or not. Sampdoria beats Juventus, 2-0. Juventus lost both uh, times in Genoa. Uh, actually, low, um, both 2-0. Juventus also at home, uh, Genoa a 1-1. Remember this ridiculous goal that Genoa scored where the Juve players thought it's already a corner. And I think they should have even uh, drawn with Sampdoria at home uh, just before Christmas uh, when the goal was wiped out. Cagliari Udinese 2-1. Udinese gets out of the way and doesn't make much trouble for the other teams. Fiorentina Genoa 0-0. Horrible game. Both teams clearly only playing for a draw. Then the super drama. Inter beating Empoli 2-1. Meaning Empoli down in the, in the Champions League. Roma Parma 2-1. Uh, Roma has to play champ, uh, with uh, if a Europa League qualification. Milan a win at Spal 3-2 is not enough uh, for them to make it to the Champions League. They only are in the Europa League group stage, if at all, depending on financial fair play. And Atalanta Sassuolo 3-1. Atalanta, the sensation of the season. Probably the most sensational team in all of Europe, uh, given their means. So the final table, if we look at it, we have, of course, Juventus on top with 90, Napoli, Atalanta, Inter, the Champions League teams. Milan is in the Europa League, as is Lazio as the cup winner, Roma in qualification. And now it again, will financial fair play be put on Milan? Uh, some sanctions will it be banned from the Europa League. Um, if yes, then it will be Roma in the group stage. So we would have them to both Rome teams there and Torino has to play qualification. Uh, Lazio finishes 50, uh, with 59 points, which is kind of disappointing um, since they were actually in the hunt for the Champions League, but they really tailed off at the end. Uh, winning the cup, though, so they have some silverware to show. Some theory in the middle of nowhere, boasting, of course, Gagliarella, who I think became Capo Cannoniere. Not sure about this now. Bologna, who were at the halfway point, really looking like they will be relegated, finish in 10th position, so solo in 11th. Uh, Udine 43, they were so much down now, they are looking quite good. Spal only in 13th, Parma 14, they were also looking at the Europa League and then had some trouble. Cagliari also credible for 41 points, Fiorentina, that's absolute disaster. They are the opposite of Bologna, they were going down, whereas Bologna were going up. Genoa just barely escapes relegation thanks to head-to-head -to, -head to Empoli. Who I have to say, uh, if I had to pick uh, before the season or even a few weeks ago, I said, yeah, probably Empoli will go down. And of all the all the teams that could go down, Empoli is maybe the one that I'm most okay with. No, I'm not okay with that anymore. Empoli did not deserve to go down. I would have loved to see what Genoa pulled yesterday and Fiorentina. Both of those would have deserved to go down, not Empoli. It's I'm still outraged on that. And really more about Empoli not making it than Milan missing out on the Champions League. Um, yes, I'm a Milan fan. It's clear from here and from all that I'm wearing. But this uh, angers me more than anything else. And of course, Frosinone and Chievo go down. Chievo with minus points. And actually, there's a lot of dark clouds. Listen to the Golazzo podcast if you want to hear more. Quickly, uh, Serie B, um, we already talked last week that promotion pressure and Lecce coming up. Then were the to a promotion playoffs bit, uh, where Cittadella beat Perugia. Uh, and no, 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 no. Uh, Hellas beat Perugia and Cittadella uh, won at Spezia. And now the winners played against Benevento and Pescara, which happened during the week. Where Benevento got a 2-1 away win on uh, last Tuesday at Cittadella and Elas and Pascara only managed a 0-0. So let's look at the return legs. Um, from those you would say Benevento and Pescara clearly in pole position. Well, Pescara, nope. Hellas Verona, I did not see anything, I just see it. Here the uh, results get a penalty in the 74th minute and converts it. So Hellas Verona is in the running, now in the final. Um, to get up to Serie A again. You see here a last minute red card. Um, and yeah, three yellow cards everywhere. Must have been a nervy match. Who will Hellas play? Benevento? Not really. Cittadella pulls another upset. Winning 3-0 at Benevento. This I did not see coming at all. 
And as you can see, already at halftime, it was 2-0 uh, for uh, Cittadella, uh, getting a third one. Absolutely amazing result. Um, for Benevento, who just were relegated from Serie A last season, a big shocker. So we have um, Cittadella against Verona in the fi for the final spot in Serie A. Cittadella has a uh, home game first, then um, it is going to Verona. So that's where we go. Germany. Uh, cup final, Bayern beating Leipzig 3-0. I had the link up there uh, for the Spanish Cup final. Talk a little bit there. The game was much, much, much tighter than uh, is suggested by these numbers here. Um, Leipzig really at the beginning was pressing Bayern hard. They made the first goal with the first chance. Then it was in the second half a long time, a very open game. Chances on both sides. In the end, Bayern puts two more in. I also saw that uh, Bayern fans wanted to celebrate the double with their team, who was barely showing up. Um, was kind of a big, big downer for everyone. Where still is a lot to play for is in a relegation playoff, where the first game uh, between Stuttgart and Union Berlin happened, Stuttgart taking twice the lead and Union twice equalizing. So Union would have the advantage here and it would be absolutely horrible for Stuttgart, uh, especially since they have been celebrating, I want to say, 125 years this year. Kind of an old club, but doesn't look good for them. I would hate it to uh, to not see the beautiful Stuttgart jerseys. They really had great jerseys this season. To not see them. Uh, Union is one of those teams uh, that would be interesting to have in the Bundesliga for sure, especially if you get a Berlin derby. They are um, they are a little bit too Berlin what St. Pauli is for Hamburg, I have the feeling, without now making too much a statement. I honestly know too little about them, but I always have the feeling that Union is this cult club from Berlin. So that and now we also know the second leg uh, result. Union Berlin, Stuttgart ends goalless. Union Berlin holding on was a little bit contentious because Stuttgart dominated proceedings, especially in the first half. They even scored from a free kick, but it was waved off for offside because an attacker was standing there um, uh, blocking the view of the goalie. So, yeah, of all of this needs to be taken off. Um, there was calls for hands in the second half by Stuttgart. Um, Union twice hits the woodwork, twice the same uh, post, uh, right post from the uh, striker's view in the second half. So they came up a little bit more. In the end, uh, no goals are scored, meaning Union Berlin goes through on... Um, away goals and Stuttgart for the second time in four years has to go down into the second league. I personally, as I said before, feel very sorry about that. But hey, we have a Berlin Derby next year in the Bundesliga, so that's going to be fun too. Let's go to France, where the last round was played um, on Friday evening, where there was a lot uh, to go for in relegation. Uh, Angers Saint Etienne 1 1, Amiens Gorgon 2 1, Amiens, uh, pretty big win. Rennes Lille 3 1. Uh, if there was anything to play for Lille, this would be a big result. Caen Bordeaux, that's the hurting result. Uh, Caen loses at home to Bordeaux. Marseille Montpellier 1 0, Strasbourg wins at Nantes 1 0, Nice Monaco 2 0, Nîmes Lyon 2 3, Reims beats PSG. Take note, but you know. Nothing to play for. It feels a little bit like with Juventus with PSG. 3-1 and then Dijon beats Toulouse 2-1 and that is the vital win that they needed. Um, quickly on top we have PSG and Lille in the Champions League. Champions League qualification is Lyon. Uh, Saint-Étienne plays in the Europa League group stage. Um, as does Rennes as a Coupe de France winner and Strasbourg, who is only in 11th here, is playing qualification. Marseille missing out, Montpellier missing out, Nice missing out, so all the southern teams. It's actually more a northern... Um, the northern teams made it. I think this Lyon Saint Etienne, of course, uh, rivals in mid-east France, but the rest is uh, large, largely northern teams. Let's go all the way down to, to the relegation battle. Um, just a note, Bordeaux, 14th, uh, 14th hor horrible season. Amiens save, Toulouse, 38 save, Monaco, 36. Looks very close. I mean, they lost, but it was never happening. But Dijon overtakes Caen to get into the relegation playoff. Caen and Guingamp are down. 
Speaking of relegation playoff, we already had Lens beating Paris FC um, and now they also beat Troyes 2-1 and move on into this relegation playoff against um, Dijon. It's going to be interesting. I think Lens has first a uh, game at home and then uh, it is um, uh, Dijon who has the home game. Um, this game went to overtime. You can see Lens, Lens took an early lead in the third. Brian Pelé uh, equalized for Troyes in the 44th and then it went to overtime in the 108th minute. Bonza with the winner for Lens. Uh, not saying much, but Lance, I have good memories from the late 90s. They, that would be nice to have them up. Also, look at the two red cards. Lance actually, um, 40th minute, they were down. If there wasn't the other red card, I'm not sure this game wouldn't have gone the other way. Quickly, now we run through the next few leagues in the UEFA ranking. Um, as far as I could find results, we'll start with Russia where uh, the league ended with Zenit being champions with 64, Lokomotiv is also in the Champions League and uh, Krasnodar in Champions League qualification. Euroleague qualification is CSK and Spartak, so the other two, probably the bigger Moscow teams, are in there. So uh, that's Russia. Portugal, we talk a lot about it. The championship finished now. Benfica is in the group stage. As champions, Porto has to play qual qualification, but Honestly, I wouldn't expect anything but them qualifying. Sporting is already in the group stage of the Europa League. And then the qualifi qualifiers, Sporting Prague and Vitoria Guimaraes. So uh, that takes care of uh, Portugal. Next up, Belgium with the championship round, which is also finished. Henk finishes two points ahead of Brugge. Um, I think they are now also in the Champions League group stage uh, I don't know now, we don't see here who is playing where. Uh, let me quickly check. Yes, Henk is in the Champions League group stage. Brugge has to play um, qualification and Standard Liège and Royal Antwerp are getting Europa League spots. The interesting thing in Belgium, of course, is that Anderlecht finished last in the qualification round. So, yeah, it's not only in Switzerland and Austria where big teams are not finishing high up. Ukraine uh, almost finished. That's one of the leagues that's not, but more or less everything done. Shakhtar is champion, Dynamo Kiev is second, and we'll see about Alexandria and Zoria if they will make it into the Europa League. Turkey was a big championship run. I mean, Bajakshi here almost got the championship, but uh, there was in the second to last round uh, the head to head Galat winning after being 1 0 down. So they are champions with 69 points. Bajakshi here 67, Besiktas um, plays in the Europa League 65 and Trabzon uh, 63 would play qualification but it's not quite clear they might be banned. Uh, Malatya Spor uh, and Fenerbahce could then play in Europa League qualification. Note Fenerbahce really really having a bad season. Netherlands, uh, everyone's favorite team this year outside of the Netherlands of course. Ajax became champions with 86 uh, points, three points ahead of PSV. Um, if you look at the Champions League, you would say, yeah, of course Ajax deserves it. I saw both games between Ajax and PSV, and I have to say, the first one, PSV completely dominated Ajax, and the second one was a very, very lucky Ajax win. So that championship was everything but trivial, but just look at the goals scored. 119 goals scored by Ajax. Absolutely staggering. They had also a really bad defeat to Feyenoord, who finished third, and Alkmaar. And I think the playoffs are now between Vitesse and Utrecht. The first game ended 1-1 um, in Utrecht and Vitesse. I think they're also playing, might make it into the Europa League qualification as well. Austria. Salzburg, who else is champion? 52 is their 10th on the Red Bull, 13th overall, uh, but they don't recognize the... Uh, former ones, Lusk, as I said, 40 points. And you know, this is half points after um, uh, the first round, so uh, there actually should be much more points. But with uh, 40, 40 points, the best result since uh, becoming champions in the league. Wolfsburg, a small team from Kärnten, surprisingly gets third spot, and uh, by beating Sturm Graz, Austria Wien also manages to get into the Europa League qualification. Sturm has now still the chance to get in the qualification via playoff, probably against the Rapid, uh, who has to first win against Mattersburg 8th from the relegation round, but we're not looking at that. Now, 
Czech Republic, Slavia Praha are champions. Of course, we know them from the Europa League run, where they only made it to the quarterfinals, beating Seville, uh, among others, ahead of Pilsen, who are usually champions. Europa League, Sparta Praha and Jablonets made it in there. Greece, another big weight was ended in Greece. Pauk wins the double. Uh, I think they won last the championship in 85. Uh, under an Austrian coach, I, I remember. Um, they were front runners for most of the season. It was most of the time, only a matter of time until they make it. I'm happy for Pauk. Uh, they have always been my team in Greece because they are black and white like Lusk. So um, happy to see them. Olympiakos in second place. Both play qualification for the Champions League. I can Atromitos play qualification for the Europa League. Note the Panathinaikos is having a really, really, really bad season there. Croatia, now we're going really deep. Who else but Dinamo Zagreb wins the Croatian League? Rijeka and Osijek are in Europa League qualification. Hajduk Split, the other big team, doesn't make it into Europe, which is kind of sad to see. I actually would wish that the uh, Croatian League would be a little bit more competitive because it's really Dinamo Zagreb, Dinamo Zagreb and no one else. But hey. I know other leagues that are that way, Austria. <laughs> Denmark, they had, I always had to think they had had, had a little fight, but nope, in the end it's uh, FC Copenhagen winning quite comfortably uh, in front of Midtjylland, Esbjerg and Brøndby in third and fourth. And then Switzerland is the last league we're in there, and there was actually quite some drama for uh, the Europa League spots. I mean, it was clear that Bern and uh, Basel will make first and second. But ahead of um, it, then was I think between uh, four teams and three spots uh, that were open. We had Zurich, St. Gallen, 1 1. One goal to little for St. Gallen. Basel, Neuchâtel, 4 1. Lugano against uh, Grasshoppers, only 3 3. Um, they could have gotten a win. Thun, Pizion, 1 0. And uh, Young Boys beat up on Luzern. Uh, which makes the following table. We had Young Boys winning by a mile. Uh, Basel also um, show, um, far ahead of the rest. Lugano makes in the Europa League despite only getting uh, this draw at Grasshoppers, who are relegated absolutely unbelievably. Thun is in Europa League qualification with 46 points thanks to the win over Sion. Luzern, despite losing, they had a good position. Uh, they even they lose, lost have having have make it in there. St. Gallen a draw against Zurich was too little, and St. Gallen misses out. Although they're level on points with Lugano, Thun, and Luzern. Absolutely crazy last day there as well. Well, that ends my roundup for uh, today. As I said, we know already Aston Villa is back in the Premier League. As I also say I'm happy about that because Aston Villa is really a team that belongs there. Let me know. If I missed any anything, I mean the last leagues I went really quick, 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 quick. I don't have too much background info, but it was interesting to see who is becoming champion, who is in there. Um, give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed this video and found it informative. Subscribe to my channel if you want to see more of these. And I will talk to you soon. Bye. Hey there. I really hope you enjoyed this video. And if you did, here are some videos and playlists that might be of interest to you too. Also, please consider subscribing to my channel as it will give you all the updates on my channel all things my soccer universe. And with that, I want to wish you a wonderful day.